Greetings, this is Dr. Will Tuttle, and I'm delighted to be joining you, dear friends, for this presentation on holistic health through vegan living. So I'm joining you from sunny California. It's a beautiful day here, and I'm delighted to be able to talk about these ideas because I think this is really uh, the most important thing we can be focusing on nowadays is how to thrive and how to not only transform our own health and our lives, but also to help our society to transform as well. Madeline and I have visited Taiwan many times uh, over the years, and it's always been a very inspiring uh, period of time for us. And one of the things that I love about the Taiwanese people is the connection uh, with nature that I feel there, and also the connection with music with animals and with spirituality, uh, the importance of meditation and of quieting the mind. So I'd like to begin my presentation uh, by playing a short piece of original piano music that uh, was inspired by our time in Taiwan a couple of years ago. And we had the opportunity to visit some beautiful places, the Taroko Gorge, and also some farms that had formerly been using uh, pesticides uh, and killing local animals to protect the crops and are now organic and, and much more uh, in harmony with nature and cruelty free. And this is really the key, I think, is to connect with the ancient wisdom of nonviolence. And so we were inspired by these examples of healthy vegan living, organic, whole food, plant-based ways of eating and living, and the pioneering work that's been done by uh, groups in Taiwan to help raise consciousness about uh, the interconnectedness of all life, that we're all interconnected, and that when we honor and respect the waters of the earth and the trees and flowers, the animals, each other, and our own true nature, then we begin to come into alignment with our inner wisdom. All right, so enjoy this piece of music. I'd like to start with this and dedicate it to the healing of all of our relations and to creating a field of awareness and consciousness that we can always come back to and remember the beauty that surrounds us all the time. Uh, it's really wonderful. As I look out the window right here over the piano, I see the lake where I took a swim this morning. And I know that in the lake there are fishes swimming around and otters and other birds and other animals that all depend on the lake. And all this whole web of life is really beautiful uh, to contemplate. So enjoy the music and take a, let's take a few minutes together to give thanks for this precious human life that we have.
Well, thank you for joining together in the meditation with music and giving thanks for our precious opportunity that we have uh, of a human life, a human birth, for this opportunity to celebrate our lives on this beautiful and abundant planet and to every day learn and grow and contribute our own unique piece of the puzzle that we have, the unique gifts that we can bring to our society and to help create a more compassionate and sustainable and free and abundant life for all living beings. That's really the purpose, I think, of this presentation is to uh, connect with our inner wisdom and I'm sure I align uh, very much with your purpose uh, as you're listening to unfold the highest wisdom in your life and the highest joy and freedom and creativity to have a joyful life that you can share with other people and to share with your children and grandchildren to help create a world of peace and healing and joy and freedom for future generations. So the underlying idea in all of this is the idea that as we sow, so shall we reap. Whatever we put out eventually comes back. And veganism is really just a modern new word for an ancient spiritual teaching at the very heart of the Buddhist teaching, ahimsa or nonviolence. The idea that we have five precepts, for example, that we follow as the foundation of our practice of the spiritual life, not to kill, not to steal, not to lie, not to uh, sexually abuse others, and not to take any alcohol or drugs which are harmful or confuse the mind or to cause others to do that uh, as well. And so uh, these five basic precepts are based on ahimsa, based on the idea that the more we act in a way that is kind and loving and caring for other living beings, the more it comes back to us as health and joy and happiness and freedom. And the more we imprison others, harm them, cause them to be sick and unhappy, the more we get sick and unhappy and lose our freedom. So we see this happening in our world during these challenging times quite a bit. We see a lot of war, conflict in the world, and we see uh, disease and, and fear and so forth. Uh, but we also see a lot of people caring, uh, learning more about what real health is all about. So that's what we like to talk about right now is health. Our physical health, the health of this physical vehicle, the physical body that we are operating. It's like a vehicle, like a car we're driving. We are not the car, right? I am, when I get into the car, I'm not the car. <laughs> and the same thing is true with the physical body. We are not the physical body. Uh, we are the being who is functioning through the physical body. So our consciousness is very important. The food that we eat is also very important because this physical body is a biochemical organism. And so food is also a biochemical uh, reality. And so when we, when we bring, whatever foods we bring in to our temple, the temple of our physical body, which is sacred, in order for us to meditate and attain enlightenment and to love and bless the world, to bring in food that supports that. That's the key thing. And so animal-based foods always are the result of, of killing. And it, it's obvious with the flesh of animals that uh, we have to kill them in order to get their flesh, whether it's cows or pigs or chickens or fish, whatever animals they are, we kill them and then we eat their mus muscle tissue. Uh, and that involves killing them. Uh, nobody really wants to eat animals that have died naturally. Uh, maybe animals that have been hit by a car or something uh, the, the, it's uh, kind of disgusting. Uh, we've, we've, we try to stay away from that. We wouldn't go up to it and start eating it. 
that shows that we're not naturally uh, carnivorous. But there are other products from animals like dairy products and eggs in which it doesn't look like we have to kill the animals to get those products. But when we look more deeply and we exercise our wisdom eye, open our wisdom eye and look deeply and open our compassion eye, we see that they also cause killing. That the dairy industry, the egg industry are based on dominating and exploiting animals, especially female animals, and stealing from them their milk and their eggs and their, and their offspring, their babies, and then killing them. So it always involves killing and, uh, and it, calls, it involves even more killing in many ways because we have to um, kill the babies typically. Uh, on, a, on an, any egg laying operation, for example, there's going to be half the babies will be females, half will be males. All the males are useless uh, and they're usually killed right away. As soon as they're born, as soon as they know they're males, they grind them up alive or suffocate them. Uh, so it's a tremendous amount of killing in the egg industry for these uh, male chicks and then of course the females are killed when their production of eggs declines. And the same thing is true with dairy cows or goats. They're impregnated over and over again on what is referred to as a rape rack in the industry. And then their babies are, almost all of them are killed right away, except maybe one female that will be a slave on the dairy to replace her mother. So when we look deeply, we see killing, we, steal, we see stealing, uh, we see lying because we're deceiving them, uh, we're abusing them sexually, uh, and uh, we're forcing drugs on them typically as well. So we're breaking all five precepts with meat, dairy products, and eggs. And the good news underlying all of this is that it's completely unnecessary, that all of us are designed to thrive and get all the nutrients that we need to be healthy and to celebrate our lives here without causing any animals to suffer. And this is a great gift. This is really good news. We don't have to do this. There's no reason. I've been a vegan now since 1980. That's 42 years, and here I am. <laughs> and I'm not the only one. There's literally millions of people like me who have been vegan, who don't eat any meat, dairy products, or eggs uh, for de many decades and are healthier than the average population. I'm, I think I'm much, much healthier than people my age. And I still have not uh, gone to a doctor since uh, the early 1970s, so almost 50 years, and, uh, or to a drugstore to, uh, to get something to be uh, healthy. Because I think when we live our lives in alignment uh, with the universal principles of health, then our vehicle, the body, will respond positively to that. So that means eating an organic, whole food, plant-based diet. And organic is very important because pesticide, herbicide, and fungicide residues and chemical fertilizer residues destroy the health of ecosystems. They also attack our own ecosystem. Uh, the microbiome, which we have inside of our body, is made up of a community of trillions of bacteria. So if I'm eating foods that have pesticides on them and herbicides and fungicides, it, it attacks the microbiome in, in living within, within me that I depend on to be healthy. Scientists now understand this, that we have more bacteria cells in our body than we have uh, of our own cells. And our health is dependent on them. And so one of the great uh, things to understand is that eating an organic, whole food, plant-based diet naturally helps us to have a healthy, happy, community of bacteria inside of us, the microbiome. It needs uh, really lots of fiber, uh, lots of polypeptides which come from starches, so grains like rice uh, and wheat and corn and millet and uh, quinoa and so forth are very healthy for us. Uh, beans also, legumes are very healthy, vegetables, fruits, nuts, grains, seeds, all these are very healthy. They build, up, they build up a healthy microbiome which digests our food and it's directly connected through the vagus nerve with our brain 
uh, which is responsible in many ways for our mood. Uh, and so it's pretty well understood now that if we're eating foods that are making our microbiome unhappy, and those would be foods that are not organic, foods that are processed, foods that have meat, dairy, or eggs in them, all of those harm and attack the microbiome. So we don't have a very healthy uh, ecology inside of us. And when that happens, we feel irritable and upset and anxious and afraid. And the vagus nerve is sending these kinds of signals to, to us, to our brain, and we're not getting the positive uh, emotions and the, uh, the hormones that are naturally created that make us feel happy because we're, we have a happy community and we're not causing suffering to other beings. We're actually doing the best we can to support farmers who are working in harmony with nature and not killing animals and not killing wildlife. So all of this creates a field of energy you know, outside of us and within us, both. It's a, it's a field and it's all interconnected. So it's very important to, to cultivate a holistic uh, understanding of health. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered in my 40 years of research is that in Western medicine especially is very reductionistic. Western science in general uh, is reductionistic. It, it works by reducing uh, holes into the parts and then analyzing the parts to try to understand the whole. <laughs> but if we look at the whole, we can understand the parts. And I think that's the important thing. It's a much more integrative way to, of understanding and it's the way of the future. Uh, the reductionistic uh, method works very well for corporations who would like to maximize their profits and maximize uh, disease. Uh, so it's very important for us uh, when we care about our health to question the official narratives in our society that promote reductionism and that promote toxic chemicals being spewed onto the land or taking toxic chemicals. I have never taken any drugs of any kind in over in 50 years. No drugs from the uh, drugstore or anything and, or alcohol or anything like that. So I think if we can live our lives to minimize the amount of, of toxic substances, try to make sure that our food is clean, our water and the air that we're breathing is clean, and that means eating a whole food, organic, plant-based diet because the pesticide and herbicide residues pollute the water and pollute the air and the soil and the food. And it's all interconnected. So eating lower on the food chain, we use much less land. That's a very important point also, that when we eat animal foods, the animals have to eat a lot of grain a lot of corn and soy and alfalfa are fed to cows, pigs, chickens, factory farmed fish. And that causes more pesticide, herbicide and fungicide residues, more destruction of ecosystems, more destruction of the climate and uh, of uh, aquifers and uh, the, um, the destruction of soil and so forth, killing of wildlife. So again, according to all of the scientists who study this, for example, the National Academy of Sciences here in the United States estimates that someone eating a plant-based diet uses only one, between one twelfth and one fifteenth of the amount of land as someone eating a standard Western diet. So you can feed 12 to 15 people eating a plant-based diet on the amount of land to feed one person eating a standard Western diet. That's a wonderful good news. We can radically reduce the amount of toxins and the amount of destruction that we're causing in the world by moving to a whole food, organic, plant-based diet. And the healthier the earth is, the healthier we will be. Right now we're cutting down rainforests unsustainably, four acres per second. Scientists say that the whole rainforest of the Amazon uh, could collapse within the next few years because so much of it is being destroyed to grow soybeans to feed to imprisoned cows and pigs and chickens and fish. And many of the fish and cows and so forth, all of these are used for dairy and eggs and meat. Many of it is exported from, from um, South America to North America, to Asia and to Europe. 
So this whole system is interconnected, so it's vitally important that we as individuals do our part to minimize the amount of violence we're causing to the ecosystems. That way we will be healthier and they will be healthier. So getting back to the microbiome in our body, it's important to realize that organic, whole food, plant-based way of eating makes a healthy biome for our body, but also a healthy uh, microbiome for the soil. Uh, we really want to help build up the soil, and it's the same thing. Chemicals and pesticides destroy the microbiome of the soil, kill bacteria, destroy the mycelium, uh, the mushroom uh, you know, underneath the soil, the fungus uh, web, and this is very devastating to, to the long-term health of our planet. So it's, it's wonderful, I think, to learn these things and then to do the best we can as individuals to work in harmony with nature. Every day, Madeline and I go out into our, we have a food forest on the other side of the house over here. We have 70 fruit and nut trees. We have five beds of vegetables and we have many uh, bushes of berries like blueberries and blackberries and raspberries and strawberries and lots of herbs and growing together in a community, a food forest that creates a lot of food. And it creates a habitat for the bees and the birds and uh, other beneficial insects. And so each one of us can be aware of the impact that we're having on the ecosystems. That the outer ecosystem and the inner ecosystem ultimately are mirrors. They mirror each other. The healthier the outer is, the healthier the inner, the healthier the inner, the healthier the outer. If I get sick uh, because I'm eating toxic food and now I need drugs for heart disease or drugs for diabetes or drugs for uh, cancer, then those drugs, which are toxic chemicals, they go through me. They go out into the water and they go into the water and they harm. Uh, fish and they harm ecosystems, insects and birds. Poisons, there's a, something called the circle of poisons and it, it goes around. The more poisons we create, the more end up in the f nature, end up in us, go through us, end up in nature again. So the earth is always trying to heal. The earth is always trying to cleanse these poisons. Uh, the best, but the best thing is for us not to take out our wallets and pay for foods and products that, that encourage more poisons to be created. And the, our body is the same way. Our body is always trying to cleanse. This is an important point to understand about health. If we want to have a holistic approach to health through vegan living, it's to understand that our body is our best friend. It's always doing the best it can to heal and, and detoxify uh, what if, whatever we're eating and drinking and, and breathing. So if we're bringing in toxins, our body's going to do the best it can to purify. That's going to look like a sickness very often. Uh, so if we take in too many toxins, then what happens? Very often we'll get a runny nose, a sore throat, a headache, diarrhea, a skin rash. These are all uh, methods that our body uses to expel toxins. We're breathing out toxins. Actually, we have, you know, as you know, probably uh, I guess five main ways of, of expelling toxins. One is through the, our bowels, through our urine, uh, through our skin, through our sinuses, and through our lungs. And 80% of all of our toxins actually are released through the lungs, through breathing. So it's very important that we breathe consciously. And I think as the people who are interested in meditation and in spirituality, we know the importance of breathing, of being aware of our breathing, of breathing consciously, of inhaling with gratitude, with exhaling and sending out love. Our breath is a great gift and it's very important that we breathe consciously and fully and deeply and learn to breathe properly. Just like we need to learn to eat properly, to eat whole organic plant-based foods uh, without a lot of oil and uh, sugar and salt that are whole, uh, we also need to learn to create whole breaths, to breathe 
all the way in deep into our abdomen and to exhale and relax and release into the present moment. Our breath is our deepest connection with nature. We're breathing all the time, we're exchanging energy, we're exchanging oxygen, uh, not only with, um, with nature, but with people around us. We're breathing together. So the more we're aware of our own breathing, the more we're aware of the breathing of other people, um, the more we're in harmony with each other. We get into a rhythm. And the more we can be conscious of our breathing, like in meditation, just be aware of our breathing. That will naturally help our mind to stabilize. And when we're eating, it's very important to be aware of our breathing. As we, as we breathe in, we chew our food mindfully with gratitude, because it's not just what we're eating, it's how we're eating. It's very important. If I'm eating with a sense of gratitude, a sense of connection with the beauty around me, the mountains, the sky, the lakes and rivers and streams, the trees, the flowers, the birds, all the animals, we're all, we're all eating. Right? We're all consuming sunlight and air and water. And life is feeding on life. And so this is a beautiful thing to understand that we do not have to get, engage in any violence towards any animals, that all the nutrients that we need to thrive and celebrate are given to us by plants. So if, I get any, if, I, if, if we hear people say, well, I'm eating meat because I want to get protein, or I'm eating dairy because I want to get calcium, you have to remember that the animal flesh and the milk, uh, the calcium and the protein and those, it came from plants. Everything comes from plants. Animals never make anything. They, animals never make any nutrient. The nutrients are all made by plants through photosynthesis. So plants create, through photosynthesis, lipids. And lipids uh, become essential fatty acids omega-6, omega-3, omega-9, and so forth, that we need to be healthy. But we can get those, those fats, those essential healthy fats, directly from plants. Whole, whole plants is the best. Uh, refined oils are not so healthy, like olive oil. It's better to eat the plants directly, eat nuts and seeds and so forth, avocados and so forth. Uh, the plants also create starches. Uh, they, so the, and starches really uh, are the, uh, the complex carbohydrates that our bodies are designed to run on. So this is very important to understand. There's no carbohydrates in animal-based foods, basically. They don't. The flesh of, of animals and so forth don't have carbohydrates. But carbohydrates burn clean to carbon dioxide and water. That's it. So when we eat carbohydrates, starches like rice and wheat and potatoes and sweet potatoes and squashes uh, and grains, we are getting mainly carbohydrates which burn clean and we just release that through our breathing and so forth. Uh, so uh, this is a healthy fuel that our bodies are designed to run on and our brains actually run on glucose, like our muscles run on glucose, which is what starches metabolize to glucose. And uh, our brain, even though it's very small, it's only a very uh, small uh, amount of weight, uh, it uses a large amount of energy and, is, and it runs on glucose. So that's why it's very important to eat plenty of starch if you want to have good energy for the brain. And uh, so plant-based foods create uh, and provide us with the essential fatty acids, uh, with the starch, the energy, the car carbohydrates that we need uh, to thrive. And remember, simple carbohydrates, processed foods like white flour and white rice and so forth and white sugar, those are not healthy because they're, they've been so processed, they're, um, they're somewhat toxic. But whole grains are very healthy. And these are the complex carbohydrates we're designed for. Plants also create the amino acids that form all the proteins, right? So you know that there's 20 amino acids and that they're all created by plants, none by animals. And so if we're eating plants, we're getting those amino acids in the proper form. Our body will take those amino acids and create over a million different proteins. And when we get the proteins from 
uh, plants, it's much cleaner than if we get it from animals. So this idea that animal protein is somehow healthier or higher quality is completely wrong. It's erroneous because animal proteins, like the mus muscles <laughs> of animals, or especially dairy products, the main protein in, in cow's milk, for example, casein, is a gigantic mo molecule. But all animal protein is very large molecules of protein that are unwieldy and difficult for our bodies to break down. Our body will break them down. We have to break them down. But in the process of doing that, we create a lot of acid, and that's uh, unhealthy. P the hospitals are filled because of people having excess acid in their body, as acidified tissues, acidified blood. That leads to kidney disease, liver disease, arthritis, cancer, breast, prostate, and colon cancer. All kinds of problems come from uh, eating foods that create acid in our system, and that's high pr animal protein foods. Uh, Plant-based proteins also create acid because basically uh, what you have, you know, foods are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, those are the carbohydrates, and you add either nitrogen, usually nitrogen or sulfur, and then you create your proteins from nitrogen and sulfur. That creates the amino acids that our body needs to be healthy, and, and we need proteins. But uh, the, too much protein is not a good idea. It creates a lot of acid. Even, even too much plant-based protein is not a good idea. So some people, when they go vegan, they're eating huge quantities of tofu <laughs> or tempeh or something because they want to get enough protein. The, the studies are very clear on this, that the longest lived, healthiest people in the world are people who eat a high complex carbohydrate, low protein diet. Right? So that's a basic plant-based diet. There's plenty of protein already in rice, in beans, in potatoes, in fruits, nuts, and seeds. There's plenty of protein. We don't have to combine it in any special way. Just eat plants. If you want to have a little tofu or a little tempeh now and then, um, that's fine, but we don't need to feel that we need to get a lot of protein. Unless you're a really hardcore weightlifter doing a huge amount of weightlifting, you'll get plenty of protein on a plant-based diet. And, even, and if you are a hardcore weightlifter, you can get plenty of protein on a plant-based diet. Also, there's many uh, of the champion weightlifters are actually vegans. So, it's just good to understand this basic thing about a holistic approach to nutrition sees food as a symphony of different uh, nutrients. There's so many nutrients. And so uh, it's essential to understand that they come from plants. All the fatty acids, the proteins, the starch, and the fiber. There's no fiber in animal-based foods. The, one of the most important nutrients we can ever eat is fiber. Fiber is vital to a healthy microbiome, to a healthy intestinal tract. Uh, so eating lots of fiber, lots of raw foods, that's a good idea. Eating you know, quite a bit of raw foods, that uh, provides uh, good fiber to keep us regular and keep our intestine in, uh, in healthy shape. So all of these things, and all the minerals and all the vitamins, they all come from plants, right? So it's important to understand that that animals don't provide anything. Uh, plants take in the minerals from the soil and they, we, get, you know, we get them from plants. They, they create the vitamins and, and many what are called phytonutrients, which are plant-based nutrients. There's many of them. So, so there's, there's literally, we have no idea how many phytonutrients there are. Scientists are all, always discovering more and more, beta carotene and uh, lycopene and so many that come from especially brightly colored uh, fruits and vegetables are filled with these very important uh, phytonutrients. So that's the thing to understand. There's, there, of course, there is, there is um, always two nutrients that people are confused about, which I'll just mention briefly. One is uh, vitamin D. It's very important to get plenty of vitamin D, and we get that from the sun. Our sun is basically uh, giving us vitamin D, our... our, our um, skin will, will convert sun into vitamin D. And if we're not getting enough sun, then maybe it's a good idea to get some kind of a supplement. So it's good to be aware of vitamin D, um, but that comes from the sun. It's actually a hormone that our bodies create. Uh, and then the other is vitamin B12, uh, which is made by bacteria, actually. And 
There are many uh, nutritionists who say that we can get enough B12 if we're eating a very healthy, organic, plant-based diet that our, our intestine will create the B12. The bacteria will, community will create the B12 that we need to be healthy. But since B12 is a very serious vitamin, uh, you don't want to be deficient and it's very inexpensive and you don't, you don't have to worry about taking too much. It's a good idea, I think. Everyone pretty much agrees to take a vitamin B12 supplement. Whether you're a vegan or not, taking a vitamin B12 supplement is a good idea. It's just we have plenty of that. And uh, so that's really the only supplement that Madeline and I usually take. Uh, it's a little B12 uh, to make sure we have enough B12. But we get a lot of sun and, you, you know, you can eat a little dirt. <laughs> There's bacteria in the dirt. And, get your B12 that way and we I think we do that with our garden anyway but um, but our bodies are fantastic at making use and recycling nutrients that are needed so it's important to just give our bodies healthy food and organic whole food plant-based foods are the best way to create a healthy uh, microbiome to have a, a healthy uh, whole organism to have lots of energy. Starch is really the food that gives us glucose, which is the energy that we need, the basic sugar that runs all the, the muscles in, the brain, in our brain. Uh, so uh, if we eat animal-based food, it's very difficult to get glucose out of that. We can, we'll do it. Our body's amazing, but our body is saying, oh, I hope you don't do that again. <laughs> so the, the sooner we move over to an organic plant-based way of eating and living, the better. For, from the point of view of our body. The better it is, of course, for the ecosystems, for the environment, because animal agriculture is so wasteful of resources and we're just completely strip mining the ocean of fish now, feeding fish to cows and pigs and chickens so they give more milk and give more uh, eggs. So we're feeding fish to all these animals that would never eat fish. Uh, we're uh, destroying soil. Uh, we're uh, cutting down trees that create oxygen that stabilize the climate. I mean, all these things are, are interconnected. It's well understood now that if we're concerned about climate change, the most important thing we can do is to move to a plant-based way of eating, and that will help the forest to regenerate again. So uh, there's many aspects to this. Uh, organic, whole food, plant-based way of eating. We don't want to be eating pesticide, herbicide, and fungicide residues, and we don't want to be eating uh, processed uh, foods that have preservatives and artificial flavors and artificial colors. These are all chemicals that are toxic. And we eat them, they harm our body, and then they go through us and they go into the environment, into the water, and, and keep doing harm. So uh, just important to see that we are like a being that's passing things through us. And, 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 it's, and the more we can pass through us something that is bringing love and healing into the world, the better it is for everybody, for ourselves included. So that's not true just for food, but it's true for uh, like what we're reading, what we're consuming. If we're reading books of inspiration and watching things that are helpful and uplifting, then when we speak to other people, we can enlighten them, we can share with them the truth. So it's important to do the best we can to actually use our intuition to discriminate truth from from lies and falsehood. Because if we take in lies and we repeat lies uh, because we don't know any better, that's harmful. So we are responsible to, uh, to, to tell the difference between truth and falsehood. And it's difficult nowadays because we are being bombarded with information all the time. And a lot of it is misinformation. And we have very powerful industries that control the media, like the meat industry, the dairy egg industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the big banks, the petroleum industries. They have a lot of money. And they use that money to control the narrative. And they make money on sick people. They don't make any money on healthy people, right? I haven't given any money uh, to the ph pharmaceutical medical industry in 50 years, right? So uh, they don't like the fact that uh, when people are healthy, they, they can't make any money. But that ultimately is the best for everyone. If we can stay healthy and be healthy, it's a great gift that we give to our loved ones. They don't have to take care of us, uh, to future generations, to ecosystems, to animals. And uh, we save money. 
right? You know, I haven't had to pay any health insurance in 50 years, right? So we save money, we can use that money, we can donate it to help feed hungry people, or we can help build communities. So it's very important to build communities of sanity, build communities of kindness, to educate our children, to question where their food's coming from, to look deeply, to question um, the, uh, the news that we hear on the television set. And uh, to be like Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva, to, to listen deeply and to hear the cries of the world, to listen deeply and hear what's actually happening, to look deeply and see what's actually happening, and to feel deeply beyond just the surface to what's really going on in the world and in ourselves. And understand that health is multidimensional. It's connected to the health of the ecosystems around us, the, the flowers and the birds and the animals, uh, to the people around us, the society, to create a healthy society based on loving kindness, on justice, equality, not forcing people to stab animals all day, not forcing people to sexually abuse animals all day. Uh, we don't want to ever do that. We don't want to cause others to do work that brings out the worst in them. Uh, so milk, dairy, eggs, meat, fish, all these things cause people to harden their hearts and be violent and engage in violence. That harms them, it harms animals, but it harms us. <laughs> we cause it. If, we, if, we take out, if I take out my wallet and pay for it, that's where I commit the crime, actually, it's in actually paying. It's not eating it, it's paying for it. If I eat it, then I'm eating the violence, which is, an, which is not a good idea. It's terrible to, to build this beautiful temple with bricks of misery and violence. So we don't want to do that, of course. So the whole idea is to not pay for violence, not to eat violence, not to teach others to do the same thing, but rather to pay for kindness, to support people who are working to build up uh, healthy food systems and to share these ideas, to share this information, to teach our children about these universal principles that whatever goes out comes back and that ultimately what we are is infinite and eternal. Uh, in the Buddhist tradition we talk about the Buddha nature. This is the nature of compassion and peace and harmony and love and kindness and mercy and caring. And that when we cultivate this in our heart and we look with eyes that see the beauty in others, that helps us to see it in ourselves. And when we see it in ourselves, then we see it in others as well. And so I think this gets to the root of health, really. To have a healthy physical body, it's important to, have, to eat healthy food, to eat it mindfully, to breathe deeply, to drink pure water, and uh, to meditate to take time every day to connect with the silence and even during the day to connect with silence, to connect with the pure potential out of which all appearances arise from moment to moment. There's, there's emptiness. <laughs> there's the pure potential out of which everything manifests. And to understand that what we are is that pure potential. Uh, every thought arises and we can allow thoughts to come and go and cultivate thoughts of kindness and caring and allow our mind to be quiet and when we connect with silence we're connecting with the source of life, with our true nature. And this is really where the health of the physical body begins to be fed because the more we come into peace, inner peace, a deep sense of inner peace, because we know that what we are was never born and will never die. We have nothing to fear. And uh, nothing in the physical world can touch us. It's like the sky. The sky is infinite and eternal, and the clouds that go by can never harm the sky. And what people say to us, if they criticize us or, or pray, uh, praise us, it's like the clouds <laughs> and the sky. So praise and blame, all these different things, pain and pleasure, the eight winds. You know, none of these things can really 
ultimately affect us. So this inner peace uh, connects health in our physical body. It connects cleanliness in our physical body. It, our body naturally starts cleaning out. And so we may get, uh, from time to time, we may get what appears to be sick. Oh, I get sick, you know. If I get sick, it's like if I get a, a sore throat or a runny nose, it doesn't happen very often. But if it does, I say, great, I'm cleaning house. That's great. I would never go to get some kind of a drug <laughs> to stop that. That'd be like, you know, like if I'm cleaning the house and someone says, oh, you're, you're cleaning the house, but it's making a mess. Of course it's making a mess. I'm cleaning out all this old stuff. You know, I wouldn't want to stop it. <laughs> the house would become more and more of a mess. That's what happens. We keep, we keep taking drugs and we don't allow our body to heal and cleanse. We keep pushing it down. We keep taking medications for headaches or for uh, runny nose, whatever it is. Then our body gets filled with more toxins and at some point we get cancer. It gets worse and worse. So let the body cleanse and then and build harmony, build internal harmony and harmony in our relationships. It's very important. I think a lot of people are sick because they're angry or they're frustrated with their parents from 50 years ago <laughs> or 20 years ago. Uh, just letting it go. Have love and understanding for everyone. Do the best we can to be loving and kind in our relationships with the people close to us. That's what veganism really is. It's being loving and kind, not just to cows and pigs and chickens, but also to friends, neighbors, and co-workers around us to cultivate a sense of understanding, knowing that everyone is suffering, really. So those are the main ideas I'd like to share with you uh, in this uh, time we have together. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to look deeply into what veganism actually is as a spiritual practice. It's not merely doing the best I can to be healthy, for myself, it's really being a field of health, a field of healing, a field of joy and freedom. And so the food, the thoughts, the actions are all in alignment. And when that happens, then our body is a field of celebration. It's a, and and when, we, when we meditate, our mind is at peace. It's much quieter. So I think I'll stop here and I'll close with a short piece of original piano music. And I'd like again to dedicate this music to the healing of all of our relations, to the beautiful country of Taiwan, the land and the people and the spirit uh, that I feel always when I think of uh, the Formosa and the ocean and the jewel <laughs> there. And so grateful that we're on this planet together and that we're able to work together to help build a world of kindness and compassion for all beings. So this is the underlying teaching of holistic health through vegan living. It's really nothing exotic. It's very natural. And when we come back to our true nature, uh, we realize that there's one life living through all of us. This is a short piece of original music inspired by Taiwan again. Enjoy.
Okay, well, thank you very much. Let's go forth and multiply this message to the benefit of all beings. Thank you.